Well, hello, Algebra 3 students. Back uh, with another beautiful uh, lesson. We are continuing upon this theme of factoring, breaking up polynomials into factors. We talked about our first step is always to create as common factoring. We talked a little bit about difference of perfect cubes. We're going to talk mostly review here today. This is something from our Algebra 2. It's something that we just need a little maintenance on. It should go pretty quick, but we do want to just again make sure we understand how to factor a trinomial. Um, this, we do something for me in your notes there. Will you cross out and? We're going to talk about that in our next lesson. So we're just focusing today on factoring trinomials. So this process, sometimes it's referred to as the reverse distributive property. Um, also reverse FOIL. Some kids or teachers talk about FOIL first, outside, inside, last. And basically the reason why they talk about this is when you take um, a trinomial, which has three terms, and you break that up, you're gonna break that up into two binomials. So you're gonna find two factors that multiply to be that polynomial. Another way to think about that is we talked about this theme earlier. Basically, if we're going to factor 12, we can factor that into six and two or we could also factor it in the polynomials four and three, so on and so forth. Okay, but we are going to do that with polynomials. So there is something that we're focusing on from our algebra days. We're gonna focus on this number, this is our constant, and we're gonna focus on this number here. This is always a trinomial, and right now we're gonna stay very, very, uh, um, plane where we're not going to have any coefficient here. So we won't have any, our, our leading coefficient will always be equal to one. All right, so to do these types of problems, we're going to look at this number and this number, and we're going to find numbers that multiply to be our constant. And so if I think about factor pairs that multiply by our constant, I mean, I can list them, 10 and 3, you know, those both could all obviously be negative. This is a negative 30, so one of these obviously would have to be negative. Um, what else could I do? I mean, I could just, I could go down and kind of make this list as, as big as I want. Um, another one I'm going to think about is six and five. Obviously, one of these is negative, so on and so forth. So I would generate a list in my head, and once I generated that list, now I start thinking about, okay, which one of these factor pairs from this list gives me a sum that equals this term's coefficient. Now, because that term's coefficient is one, I'm looking for which one would give me that. This is close. Instead of this being negative six and five, the numbers that I'm gonna use are going to be negative five and six. Now, what I'm gonna do is this, is I'm gonna make this into a binomial and it's gonna be x minus five, x plus six. Positive six, negative five. What do these x's stand for? So here's what's really happening for my algebra two days. When we FOIL this, or we call this the distributive property, and we multiply this like we learned a few lessons ago, we get x squared, we get minus five x, we get six x, and we get negative 30. What happens is these two here combine and they give me this positive one X. So this is our idea, this is our answer here. This is called the uh, reverse FOIL factoring technique of trinomials. And you're gonna get faster at this as it goes. You start by looking at this number, you start generating a list in your head, 24 and one, um, eight and three, um, uh, six and four. I mean, you can just continue this list, 12 and two, so on and so forth. One of these has to be negative. So I'm just gonna put a negative sign here. You get to choose which one's negative. And then just take the list and find which one of these give us a sum equal to five. All right, well, it looks like no, no, no. Eight and three, we want it to equal to positive five. So I'm gonna make this three negative, the eight positive. So here's what it's going to look. It's going to be x plus 8. The order I write these binomials in doesn't matter. And then it's going to be x minus 3. At the end, box it in or hard it if you love it. 
Um, make sure you check your work so you can distribute this out. Make sure it's x squared, 8x minus 3x, and then minus 24. Just make sure this all works out. That gives you your 5x all good. We're good to go. Okay, that's it for today. Honestly, just more maintenance for my algebra two days, factoring trinomials using the reverse distributive property. Uh, go get them. Hello everybody, uh, welcome back. Today we're gonna to continue with factoring. We're gonna do some that are a little bit tougher today. Uh, we're going to both do the ones with leading coefficients that are trinomials, and then we're gonna move into some perfect cubes. So the first thing we're gonna do is um, practice the ones that have a leading coefficient that's bigger than one. So far up to this point, we've been doing ones that just have a leading coefficient of one. Now there's two different ways we can do these. The first way is we can really look at this as a reverse distributive property and kind of do guess and check. What we do here is we ask ourselves, what makes 3x squared? Because those are going to be our first terms. I like to make our parentheses right out in front like this. And then we say, what times what is 3? Well, it's going to be 3 and 1. That's really our only possibility. So we're going to say 3x and 1x will give us 3x squared. And then we have to say the last ones we know make four. So we've got two and two, and what? Four and one is possibilities? Well, if we try two and two first, that means we're gonna put a two here and a two here. Both are plus, so these have to be plus. And now, we don't know if this is right. That's why it's called guess and check. So, with guess and check, with guess and check, all we really need to do then is go through our distributive property or FOIL. We get 3x squared, and we know our last one are these two, plus 4, and then we need to check to see if we get the middle correct, which will be 2x and 6x. Now that does make 8x, so we factored correctly. Now if that didn't give us 8x in the middle, we may have had to go back and try 4 and 1. Now there's another way to do these that follows kind of an algorithm that will always be able to get them right for you, but it does involve a few more steps. Some of you will like this, some of you may like the guess and check. So the way we do it is it's called slide and divide. If we have 3x squared plus 8x plus 4, what we do here is we are going to take the three and get it out of there by sliding it to the end. So we're going to have x squared plus eight x plus 12. So we multiply the three times the four. Now we just need to factor that. And we should know how to factor x squared plus eight x plus 12. It's x plus six and x plus two. That will give us our uh, 6x plus 2x, which is 8x in the middle. And now what we want to do here is we need to do the divide part. We already did the slide part, now we divide. We divide by whatever the number that we slid over was. So that's 3. So we put the 3 here, we put the 3 here. Now, once we do this, we have to actually simplify. So that would be x plus 2, and here we can't simplify. If you can't simplify, what you do is we take the bottom number, the denominator, and we put it in front. So it's x plus 2 times 3x plus 2. And if we multiply that out, voila, we will get 3x squared plus 6x plus 2x plus 8x plus 4. So it worked out. Now, number two is um, one that I would definitely want to do slide and divide on. And the reason is, is that there's a lot of different possibilities for the six. We would have six and one and three and two, and it might be a little bit tougher for us. So let's just do this one with slide and divide. We're going to take the six and multiply it out there. We're gonna get x squared 
minus 11x plus 18. So now we need to figure out what multiplies to be 18 and adds to be negative 11. We've been practicing this a lot. So let's go with x minus 9 and x minus 2. I think that works out. Yes, it does. So that is the slide part. Now we need to divide. What did we divide by? Well, it was a 6. And then we simplify. So we have x minus 3 halves and x minus 2, or x minus 1 third. Now, if you're not so great at simplifying, you can use your calculator for this. So we would have the 2 go in front, so 2x minus 3, and the 3 would go in front, so 3x minus 1. If we multiply this out just to check to make sure we did it correctly, we would get 6x squared, Outside, minus 2x. Inside, minus 9x. And last, plus 3. This will make our minus 11x, and we've got it correct. So that is how to do a problem that has a coefficient, leading coefficient that's bigger than 1. Now the second type of problem,